Hi, how's it going everyone? Empress Justice here. If you'd like to check out my daily readings, you can check them out on Instagram, Twitter and Facebook. I've just uploaded them so you can check them out right now. There might be a couple of errors on it, but I'll clean that up. Um, also, I've got the uh, June reading up on YouTube, but I haven't put the timestamps on yet. So you've got to bear with me on that one. Um, I'm going to do that today. I'm going to put the timestamps on today. And yeah, that's about it. So if you'd like to check out my latest readings, you can do that. Uh, the new moon still counts, by the way, because it's about to be the new moon on Monday. So if you'd still like to check out the new moon reading in Baron, in new moon reading, and it's not in Barony, it's in Rohini. I keep getting it confused with the the April reading, but no, the new moon in May is in Rohini. So if you'd like to check that out, you can check that out on Empress Justice Tarot YouTube. Um, with that, I'm going to continue with the live update on me, um, being real, the past few days, nothing, almost nothing anyway, there's been some gaslighting here and there and all that type of shit, but apart from that, nothing, absolutely nothing, there's been no arguments, well, towards me anyway, there's been no arguments, no nothing, like for the last few days. Um, I do think, I don't know, I think some truth about me being angry and potentially violent has been said. I mean, I mean, you know, there wouldn't be a lie to say that I would have been, um you know, potentially violent at some point. That's not a lie because anybody can look at my social media and, and, and see that's actually happened. But the reasons behind it might have been um, clouded over somewhat. But something tells me that if that's the case, then it won't be able to be clouded over for very long because, you know, this is not just about me and the neighbours. It was never just about me and the neighbours. Like, ev everybody could see that from my time in London. It was never just about me and the neighbours. It was bigger than that. So it's, um, I feel like it's only a matter of time. If the truth hasn't come out already all around the village, then it's going to come out. And I feel that it might change because there was already something in the air around like everything that had been going on. Now I feel like that might kick up a gear, but good, I need it to. Because at the end of the day, if the truth is coming out, if everybody thinks that I'm crazy and violent and all that type of stuff, then there's an unexpected benefit to that. There is an unexpected benefit to it because then if people think that I'm really crazy to the point of being violent, then they're backed into a corner because now they have to think to themselves, okay, we need to be able to perform street theater on this woman, but we have told everybody that she's crazy and violent. So if we insult her in front of her face, then people are going to know that we're responsible for what's happened. So we need to find a way to gaslight her in a way that doesn't look obvious, in a way that doesn't highlight what we've done. You know, it kind of it kind of puts the gang stalkers on the back foot. If the, It's one thing to say that I'm crazy and to think that I'm harmless and crazy, but it's another to think that I'm violent and crazy. If the, people think that I'm violent and crazy, the gang stalkers, I don't know where the gang stalkers get this from, that they think this actually aids what they're doing. It doesn't. It just makes it more difficult for them. Because think about it. If I was crazy and harmless then you would be bullying somebody who was crazy and harmless and you knew it and you'd be actively playing a part in making their mental health worse, which is already bad enough. But if you think somebody's crazy and violent and you keep on provoking them, then when the provocation happens the way that you want it to, who are they going to be questioning when that happens? So the thing is, is that with the, the slurs and everything, with the street theatre and everything, the, the stalkers actually put themselves on the back foot. And I think people are starting to realise that now, which is why there might be a bit of frustration going around. 
Um, well, not not like throughout the whole village because, you know, there are plenty of people here who don't fucking know me, don't care, don't know me from a can of paint. But it's just the people who are involved in the community stalking, it might have caused some frustrations among those people because now they have to think, how are we going to be able to perform psychological torture on this woman and not incur enough of a wrath to put everybody, to make everybody culpable? at the very least. How do we do that in a way that doesn't incriminate literally everybody that we've told? How do we do that? So that's where I think the real fear comes from. It's not from what I'm going to do. It's the fact that because this is why they wanted to get me offline, because they think that if they get me offline, then there's not enough of a public presence to have everything that I'm saying stick. But it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because the thing is, is that, they, you know, there's evidence, you know, there are witness accounts from the police reports of everything that I've been saying. Do you understand what I'm saying? So, I mean, maybe in London, me being online might have meant something, but it's not the same here. It's not the same here. So if there are witness accounts that I'm usually the type of person who keeps myself to myself, there are witness accounts that, you know, um, you know, there have been several reports on me and yet I'm the type of person to mind her business. Like, there are certain things that when you really look at the evidence and look at the reports, there are certain things that on their end is not going to add up. So, yeah, it, they've, they've backed themselves into a corner because if they, if I'm crazy and harmful then provoking me could incite violence. That's incitement to violence, right? But if I'm crazy and harmless, then it's incitement to self-harm and potential suicide. So now they've kind of backed themselves into a corner. So it's now it's difficult to be able to say anything at this point. And the, it's not me that they're scared of. It's not me that they're scared of. They think they're scared of me, which is why they keep saying that they're not. But it's not me that they're scared of. They're scared of the ramifications of their actions. They're scared of the ramifications of their actions. They're scared of, well, if I bully someone, then I'm going to look like a piece of shit either way. That's what they're, that's what they're worried about. They don't, they're not scared of me. They're not scared of me. And that's all right. That's all right with me. I don't need them to be too scared of me because if they're too scared of me, they get desperate. And when they get desperate, they get reckless and reckless, desperate people will do anything. So I don't need them to be that frightened of me like that. I don't need that. It's all right with me that they're not scared of me. I don't need that. I don't need them to be too scared because they get too scared. They get too desperate. And if they get too desperate, you can't you can't control the situation. And guess who I learned that from? Guess who I learned that from? So, yeah, I don't need people to be too scared of me, mate. Oh, that just interferes with what I need to do. So, yeah. Either way, rock hard place. And the consequences for the actions against me is just going to keep going up. And people in London might only be feeling it from afar. They might not know that doing that to me is causing some of their grief right now. But whether they know or not, it's still going to bite them. It's been biting them. You understand what I'm saying? So, yeah. It's been biting them, mate. Been biting them. So, yeah. There are there are there are perks to being underestimated. There are perks to it. So there is stuff that I wanted to say about the Jules Scott situation. Um, there are things that I've said online on Facebook already. Uh, I responded to a person who was talking about it. They said, first of all, the thing about Jules Scott, right, is that what I've observed is that this sergeant in Texas 
was talking about how she fears for her life and how I got you, I got you. Um, basically, this US sergeant was talking about, you know, her being in fear for her life and, you know, how she fears people might try to kill her. Next thing you know, she's been arrested. Arrested and, and hospitalised. Now, the hospitalised thing, I get, but arrested for what? What was she arrested for? So that's the first red flag. The second red flag is that a week later, I, I don't even know if it's a week later. I think it might have been less than that. Like within the week or a week later, we've got these school shootings three and a half hours away in Ovado or something. What's it called? So there's Fort Hood, which is in Killeen. And Killeen is three and a half hours away from where the school shooting took place in Texas, right? And forgive me for this, because it's going to sound like I'm being, like, you know, I'm being xenophobic or racist or... Please forgive me for saying this, because xenophobia and racism, I really literally hate that shit. But there's a connection, stay with me. So the shooter, the people who killed the kids, was Hispanic, right? A week before that, Jewel Scott talks about being in fear of her life. So I'm connecting the dots here. The shooter was Hispanic. And the reason why that's relevant is because the Fort Hood military base in Killeen was going to be named after a Texan of Hispanic descent, General Calvaso. It was going to be named after him, right? Right. So I don't think that was done as a way to demonize Hispanic people or anything like that. But I think the government knew what they were doing. I think what they did there was a form of predicting predictive programming. So Fort Texas was going to be named after a, a Texan general of a Hispanic descent, Fort, Fort Calvaso. Uh, or Fort Calvazo, and then it was going to be a Hispanic kid, like a few days later after that woman made that video of the Fort Hood situation, that, that killed those poor little souls who died. The reason why I bring this up is because what the government tends to do is when they are controlling the population or they're putting something in place, they use signifiers, specific signifiers. They put those specific signifiers in place, not so that the public know what's going on, because we're going to be subconsciously taking it in. Not so the public knows what's going on, but so they are kept aware that it is their handiwork. So the fact that this kid was Hispanic and the, the one shooting people and stuff like that, and then you had the, the sergeant at Fort Hood, or soon to be Fort Calvaso, Calvazo, um, talking about being in fear of our life. So that it's like what the government will do is they will create signifiers so that they know what's going on, so that they know what they've planned. That's why I bring it up, because there's a connection there. You mean to tell me three and a half hours from a military base where a woman said she was in fear of her life a few days later, a man shoots up some children. That's not coincidence. Remember, because of nanotechnology, all of us are connected with AI. And even without that, we're all connected with AI anyway. AI anyway. Most of us spend our time on our phones, which directly affects our mood. There are specific frequencies that are being emitted from smart devices and technological devices. And that's just without the psychotronic weapons that are being used on the public day in and day out. So there's the psychotronic weapons, there's a the technology which is already listening in on our conversations and increasingly advertising to us specifically about certain things, right? So we've got, we're, our minds are connected with AI and then we've got the psychotronic weapons. When you combine all of those together, it's no wonder that that kid did what he did. 
psychotronic weapons and a combination of psychotronic and weapons and AI is what got him. Now, I don't know for sure if V2K got him because V2K is very specific, okay? V2K is very specific. You don't need a large amount of people to be able to reach several people at once. But in order to tell one kid specifically in America, in a country with like how many millions of people in it or billions of people in it, to basically send a voice of God to one particular kid, kill, 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 or kill some kids or something. It would take like it, it would take a lot of manpower and a lot of organization to be able to just target one kid and say kill. So for me, what I think happened was psychotronic weaponry. It was a mixture of psychotronic weaponry, the smart technology that we're already using, which emits harmful frequencies in the first place that affects our mood and our health. And then on top of that, the AI, which I think, um, depending on what we're fixated on, um, it attaches a certain algorithm. There's a certain algorithm that, that comes with what we search up the most or what we talk about the most, it, you know, on the phone to our parents or something like that. So it's a combination of AI, psychotronic weaponry. I think there is some voice to skull involved, but I think... With the voice to skull in particular, if it's not one specific person in in particular, then it might be what might be happening is v two k might also be being used on mass, and suggestions might be placed by whoever is using the the uh the v two k This is just conjecture at this point when it comes to the v two k What I think with the v two k is that V2K might be not giving specific instructions, but giving remote suggestions to kill or remote suggestions to harm or something like that. Because remember, it's a cochlear, it's ear bones in your ear. It's very easy to uh, send a message to these bones in your ear and make it look like paranoid schizophrenia. So I feel like it's a combination of that, psychotronic weapons, AI, and... Yeah, I think that's I think that's it. I think even the V2K we can nix the V2K. I think it's a combination of that and I think that's why he got violent and did what he did to those kids. Now, it was definitely government. Now the middlemen between the government and the criminal organizations that they're in league with. The middlemen between the perpetrators and the government slash crime syndicates. We don't know who those middlemen are. So we know defense systems are behind this. We know uh, government is behind this. We know criminal networks are behind this. We also know about the people that are targeting us specifically as TIs. We know about that. What we don't know is who the middlemen are in the midst of all that. We don't know who are the ones who are organizing these people into hierarchies and teams. You know, and there are several people, like I said before, let that like there's TIs, there's perps, there's uh what do I call it there, handlers, and then there's controllers. There are several hierarchies above the controllers that we don't know about. Those are the middlemen. We don't know who they are. Do you understand what I'm saying? So we don't know like the entire specifics of how everything works. But, but you know, if you're a TI long enough, you start to have a very good idea about how people can be controlled if you go through this long enough. So I feel like that kid who shot the kids, I think it was just a case of him being extremely susceptible to everything that was happening to him. He might not have even needed community stalking in order to do what he did. A lot of people are saying, oh, you know, it might have been community stalking and that's why he killed the kids. I'm like, community stalking ain't going to make you kill kids. It's not going to make you kill children. It's not going to make you kill children. You have to get a very specific suggestion to do that. Or you already have to have that in you in order to kill children. Because the thing is, the way this technology works... It exaggerates 
reinforces whatever it is that you give it, okay? Why do you think I keep getting smarter all the fucking time in spite of these weapons being fired on my fucking brain? Why do you think that is? It's because the AI, it, or it augments and it reinforces whatever it is that you give it. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's the same with psychotronic weapons. It's the same with anything. They can only re they can only reinforce when it comes to violent behavior. They can only reinforce what's already there. This kid might have already had violent tendencies um, by the time they started firing the weapons on him. You know, it can bring if you've got anxiety, if you've got if you've got anxious behavior. If you've got depressive behavior, like if you've already been traumatized enough to where that's in you already, these weapons will come in. They don't change who you are. They just supplement what's already there. It takes a significant amount of brain damage in order to really and truly change who you are as a person. Most likely this kid was sick and didn't tell anybody. And then what happened was that the government must have said, you know what, this guy is a perfect candidate. Let's use him. Let's get him on the V2K. Let's get him on the psychotronic weapons. Let's get him on. Let's get him on all this shit. And he'll do what he will, we'll, you know, he'll do what we need him to do. Let's get him on that and he'll do what we need him to do. And like I said before, there's no way he's the only one because, you know, even around here in, in, in this village, people have been arguing. There have been arguments going on. It, you know, the neighbours have been quiet. These neighbours have been quiet. I've been quiet. We haven't been in the back and forth for days now. Okay? We haven't been in the back and forth for days now. There's even increased arguments going on in this village where we are right now. There's even increased arguments going on outside. Increased violence going on over here. There's increased violence everywhere. It's not a coincidence that, you know, one of my one of my TI friends on Facebook said that there might be over 100, 100 million people who are actually being targeted with these weapons. And I believe it. I believe it's only a small number of people like me who are aware of um, being victimized. I don't know why us in particular are being made aware of that. I don't know why that, why that is, but... There's only a small number, like hundreds of thousands at the most, that know that they are TIs. It's not very many, but in comparison to the people who are actually being targeted right now. And in order to do that, it takes a, it takes a system of mass brainwashing. It takes a substantial output of radia radiation. It takes a substan substantial output of radioactive, or not radioactive energy, but it takes a sustainable output of energy is what I'm saying. Microwave energy, sonar energy, frequencies, whatever you want to call them. It takes a substantial amount of output to reach that many people at once. And yet it is being done. Which is partially why people are more violent towards each other than ever, towards each other than they have been. That's, that's what's responsible for the increase in violence. That's partially what's responsible for it. It's these frequencies being emitted because remember these technologies has been around. They've been playing at this. You have to you have to remember these governments have been playing around with static energy since at least at least the late 1930s. We are in 2022. There is no coincidence that people are more engaged in violent behavior. And as for in being engaged in more sexual behavior. Again, the sexual behavior is violent. People are having, actually having less sex than they used to. And that's before COVID. That's before COVID. People are actually having less sex than they used to. So it, it, ha it definitely hasn't fueled any sexual desire. It's all violence. It's all violence. It's all anger. It's all anxiety. It's all fear. It's all this. It's all that. It's all the other. Now, people talk about sex more, but ain't nobody having sex ain't nobody having sex the set the amount of people having sex has gone down if anything so it's led to increased violence and increased disempowering emotions like anger and anxiety and depression that's been on the increase because of a mass use 
of V2K of um, V2K of fucking artificial intelligence that's increasingly being used now, especially with nanomedicine and nanotechnology spreading around like wildfire at the moment. Okay, so there's AI V2K. And there's psychotronic weapons, like there's the, you know, there's specific weapons to emit a certain frequency that make you angrier, that make you less, you know, that make you less congenial. <coughs> and then we've got smart technology that makes us, you know, that makes us less congenial and that makes us angrier. I've certainly noticed, right, that whenever I couldn't get online, I remember that being on in Facebook jail several times, right? Whenever I was in Facebook jail and I couldn't get online as much as I used to, my mood actually improved. My mood, my mood improved drastically. I was going out doing more things. I was engaging with the things that I love to do more. I was reading more. I was gaining more knowledge. I was getting more work done. All the rest of it. So smart technology and smart, that, that actually makes you angrier on top of that. And then you've got this fucking LED lights. These LED lights, these supposedly energy saving lights that causes insomnia. So people ain't getting sleep. <laughs> They're fucking like, so people are not getting sleep. First off. Second off, they're being fired with these fucking like, you know, electronic weaponry and what have you. And, and uh, you know, apparently at, in coastal areas, the targeting actually gets worse because with the coastal areas, the ocean produces or the sea produces um, ionized air, which cancels out the frequency. So you're more likely to get attacked in coastal towns than you are anywhere else, even though with me, the targeting is actually lessened since I've got here, which is just chef's kiss. Thank you. But I don't I don't know. I can't say I can't say that because. I was able to walk in London and I never had that much debilitating pain in London. So I don't know. I don't know. But, you know, with the coast, with the coastal areas, it's supposed to be even worse because the non-ionized, you know, the ionized air from the sea has to be cancelled out. So, boy, all I'm saying is when it comes to Fort Killeen and when it comes to or Valde, I think it's all Valde in Texas. There are a lot of elements at play here. And I don't buy for one second that Sergeant Scott situation and that the school shooting are not linked. I don't buy that for one second. Because before a bombing happens or a shooting happens or there's a, there's a fire of some sort, before any of that shit happens... There's always somebody who says, like at least one person who says, I'm in fear of my life. There's usually at least one full-scale argument or full-scale violent situation before that, that event happens. It's because, the, you know, all these emotions are being cranked up deliberately and artificially until one person snaps and ends up killing someone. And from there, the public will cry out, to, you know, the public will cry out for more oppressive or, you know, or tighter restrictions on what they can consume, what they can do, what they get. Like, it happens time and time again. All you need to do is crank up them frequencies, crank up the voice to scar, let the AI do its thing. And then next thing you know, a really serious situation happens and people are crying out to be restricted more. That ain't no fucking coincidence, bruh. That is no coincidence. But the thing that messes me up about, like, anybody, not even just Americans, about anybody, they really think that, you know, taking away your guns is going to be, is, is literally taking away your, your only line of defence against the government. You mean to tell me guns, hoarding food and having no strategy is going to work against fucking millennia of population control, of systemic population control, and our chemical population control. You're telling me guns are going to work against fucking...
technologies that are way more advanced than ours. The only thing people are going to do with guns is hurt one another. That's the only thing they're going to do with them. That's the only thing they've been doing with them is hurting one another. They haven't been going to no governments or, or no fucking, you know, defense systems companies with, with those fucking guns because they know better. They haven't been going to no police station with them fucking guns. They haven't been going to no fucking mental health asylum with them fucking guns. They ain't been going to no government building with them fucking guns. Don't, don't take away my guns, you take away my freedom. If you don't even trust your government in the first place, why the fuck would you listen to them? And why the fuck would you broadcast that you're keeping your weapons? Idiot. idiot like guns are gonna fucking stop a fucking juggernaut that's been growing <laughs> that's been growing for the past few thousand years now human beings kill me with this bullshit they kill me with the fucking nonsense like guns are gonna do anything please stop these these population control efforts they're not even efforts they are tried and tested population control methods and the only difference between now and a few hundred years ago is that the techno technology is more advanced and the mind control or the population control is increasingly at a quantum level or at a cellular level at, at, at a smaller level than just outwardly physical because you know standard violence isn't going to work anymore so they have to get to us through our minds our feelings they had to get to us through the astral realm because it is not going to be enough just to be violent with us. These people figured that out hundreds of years ago and we ain't figuring this out now. But yeah, that was no coincidence. Them shootings were no coincidence. But what I predict is that even though certain people are going to call for tighter gun, tighter gun control. And to me, I don't see a problem with that. I don't see a problem with tighter gun control. Um, the only thing that worries me is that, you know, it's just going to lead to people being more racially profiled and more because, you know, that's ultimately what it leads to. It doesn't lead to anything really substantial. It just leads to, you know, a gun apartheid where more privileged people are able to control the guns. But, you know, I, I don't see anybody giving up their guns. I see people attacking one another with those same guns like, like has been happening. That's all I see. I don't see anybody giving up their guns. But the key, word, the key words are each other. They ain't going to no government building with them guns. They ain't going to no fucking, uh, why I call it there, military base with them guns. <laughs> Let them go to a military base with them guns same way. Let them try that shit. Huh? Now, what? Let them try that shit at a military base. Let them try that shit even in a mental health hospital. No, I mean, no, it won't be enough rope to hang your ass. Where's it? Where, what are you gonna, what kind of uprising are you gonna perform with them fucking guns, bro? What kind? The only thing that's going to happen when you keep your guns and when you start firing on anybody who tries to take it away from you, the only thing it's going to result in is a mad mad situation that you can't, you're going to just end up starting something that you're not going to be able to finish. Guns where? You're just going to start something you're not going to be able to finish. Because if that pipeline from the government to you cuts off and you don't have a farm, you don't have livestock... And by the way, isn't Bill Gates buying up all the farms anyway? Through the multitude of companies that he has? And not even just Bill Gates. Like, are, are there not, you know, farmland being bought up by huge conglomerates anyway? So, like... Guns? What the fuck are guns going to do? This ain't the 1700s, my guy. What are guns going to do? The only thing that guns will potentially protect you from 
It's other people who mean to end your life. And even then, you better be a better shot than they are. Because that don't hold no guarantees. You know. But. Oh. Yeah. People are stupid. I just. As for me. I don't want to talk too much about strategy. Even though I just. I just fucking did. I don't want to talk too much about strategy. Because. I feel like it's a waste of my knowledge. If I start. Talking too much and shit. Because nobody's listening anyway. And if they do. They use it in the wrong way. So fuck it. Fuck it. I think it's time I stop talking so much about, you know, what strategies we should be using and what we should be doing. Because nobody's listening. And even if they are, they aren't listening the right way. And they're getting themselves hurt or something, you know, at worst. No. But, yeah. I've got the blinds drawn because my place is a mess. And my place is a mess because... Uh, it's just not organized. It's not dirty, but it's just it's just not organized. Do you know what I mean? And plus, I'm still on the rag, so I've got a I've got to maintain the the bleeding situation. Even though something tells me that my period might be ending soon, thank God. The way I bleed, it doesn't feel like. It feels like I've been cut open. It feels like an injury. It doesn't feel like. Um. You know, the, the lining of my womb is cleansing itself. Because the way it happens, it's like there's a big cut. There's a huge, I'm, I'm sorry to be graphic. It's like you cut yourself and it starts bleeding profusely for a while and then it stops. That's what this is like. It, it just stops so abruptly. Like it just doesn't feel like, like a proper period. It just feels like, you know, either acupressure has been used in order to promote the heavier bleeding or it feels like I've been cut in my womb by the electronic weapons and yes that can happen and then the cut is healed which means the bleeding has has stopped like the profuse bleeding has just stopped really really abruptly it just feels like a cut it doesn't feel like an actual period and I've got and I've got these contraceptive pills down here. Oh, these were delivered to me. And I'm thinking that I should take them, but then they lead to clots. I already might have diabetes that hasn't been diagnosed yet. Hasn't been diagnosed yet. Nobody's told me that I've got diabetes and yet I have all the symptoms of diabetes. And then on top of that, um, I'm being hit with non ionized radiation every day which makes the blood even thicker. And then on top of that, um, I keep getting hit in my heart. So if I start taking those pills, which, you know, apparently clot the blood and stop your bleeding, how does that help the situation? And I wanted to take them. I really wanted to take them because it just, it just felt like, you know, I was just tired of having to deal with that shit. I just really wanted to take them. But then I had to think to myself, why? Why am I going to do that? Give myself blood clots and shit. Especially seeing what they did to my mother. And having all that kinds of whole kinds of blood clots. I, I can't even like count the amount of fucking. Oh, I don't even want to go into it. But yeah. But anyway, my fellow TIs, you guys take care of yourselves. I love you guys very much. Peace and blessings. Mm. Oh, yeah. I forgot to tell you guys. Um, somebody saying, well, we got a killer them talking about me. Um, other TIs have basically come online talking about the regular hits that they get on their lives. And then I had to remind myself, yeah, I've had regular hits on my life as well. This is nothing new. <laughs> it's usually just like me getting attacked in the heart repeatedly in order to kind of give me a heart attack. But yeah, TI's getting hits on their lives is, is just nothing new at all. It's nothing new.
So, yeah, so other TIs have come in and basically talked about, you know, the attempts that have been made on their lives. That you... Listen, man, this shit. Mm. And I don't even know if that we've got a killer then thing was a hit. But even then, I was only 50% sure it might have been. Yeah, I'm probably some stupid dickhead mild enough. But anyway, yeah. Even even death attempts on TIs, nothing new. Death threats, nothing new. Day in the life for us. But yeah, I gotta go. I'll see you guys later. Take care. Peace and blessings. TIs, we got this. Stay strong. I love you. Mm -hmm. Bye-bye.